So today I wanted to continue my in-depth series on Destructor and why it's my new favorite plugin in FL Studio. And I figured what better sound to use this on than 808s. And if you watch through the video, you'll find out how you could get 10 free presets that I personally made for 808s using Destructor for free. So we're going to use this on one of my own 808 samples from my in-flight music 2020 drum pack, which I just dropped not too long ago. Link is in the description for this. I'm also going to make one from scratch just using 3x oscillator and Destructor. So I'm just going to take this elapsed 808. And you'll notice that this 808 has a heavy amount of distortion on it. If you want to get rid of any of that extra high end, you just go in to your sampler settings and just adjust with any of these filters here and you'll warm up the sound pretty quick. But with a plugin like Destructor, not only do you have this filter here, you also can add in your own distortion. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to turn off this chorus, turn off this speaker, and we're just going to filter out the extra distortion in this 808 and then we're going to add in our own distortion. I'm going to leave the soft clip output on. Soft clipping tends to sound really good on 808s. It's also in our distortion settings, a soft clipper right there. Let's go to this filter. Right now it's already set to low pass 12. Let's just start with that for now and let's turn off our distortion and adjust the cutoff here. Nice, dark, and grimy. Love how it sounds right there, but let's go through some of these other low pass filters. So here's low pass six, low pass 24. That gets it really nice and subby. Low pass 12 alternate. That's a nice blend between both where you still have some of that extra saturation towards the top, which would make this 808 as is with this filter sound really good on laptop speakers and Apple earbuds. Check out low pass 24 alternate. So here we lost quite a bit of volume. So from there, we could either increase the input or the output. Now, if you increase the input, that's going to give us more drive into the filter. If we increase the output, we're literally just making this sound louder. So let's try both so that you understand the difference between the two. So that literally just got louder. Let's increase the input and listen for the difference. So some of you might not be able to hear that really subtle difference, but by driving this input into this filter, you're getting a little bit of extra resonance right around the bump where this cutoff filter is. But now let's mess around with some oversampling here. And that decreased our signal. Now let's increase the output knob. Now from there, what I would normally do is decrease this mix so that we get more of our original signal back in. And that right there, I really like that sound with this low pass 24 alternate. But honestly, my favorite were the low pass 12 and the low pass 6 without the oversampling. But let's listen before and after. So here's without destructor. And with it. So we really changed the tone there. But let's say we go back to the low pass 12 and turn down the oversampling, reset all these settings and leave the cutoff and resonance exactly where it's at. So we have that nice warm signal again. Now let's go into the distortion and add some more distortion to this. The really cool thing about Destructor, they added all these Harmer algorithms from Harmer's distortion. So I only have FL Studio Producer Edition, so I've literally never really heard or messed with Harmer, specifically in terms of the sound of their distortion. I'm literally listening to this for the very first time here in this video. So, so let's start with Harmer Classic. Bro, <laughs> that's mean, that's mean. So let's turn that off and compare. So yes, it did get louder, but 
man, the sound of that distortion is really nice and warm and crunchy at the same time. Without changing a single thing, that distortion right there, just the Harmer Classic, I can definitely understand why it's called Classic. Let's switch to Hill. Okay, so these distortions are all probably going to sound pretty fantastic with the filtering that we have on here. And might I say that the original 808 was pretty dope as well. So we're adding this to a really high quality 808 if I say so myself. But for real though, these distortions are blowing my mind right now. Let's go to flat hat. Wow, okay, I'm just gonna stop talking and we're just gonna go through all of these. I wanna let you know how you could get those 10 destructor presets for free. All you have to do is follow me on Instagram and DM me the code word that I put in the description. Within 24 hours, I'll send you the free download link where you can get those 10 presets. So these last four actually aren't in Harmer. These are just new distortions inside of FL Studio. In the past, the only distortions, distortion units that I had to work with were Blood Overdrive, which was my favorite distortion in FL, Fruity Fast Distortion, which was my least favorite, Soft Clipper, which I didn't really use as distortion, and then Fruity Wave Shaper as well, which is actually different from this wave folder. So when I was going through these Harmer distortions, some of these sounded like they would be really useful for EDM type genres, which I am actually getting heavily into right now. I've started doing Future Bass, so I'll definitely be using these Crush distortions, the Sine Crush, the Bit Crush. I'm sure they probably pronounce it Sin Crush, but I'm sure it's referring to a sine wave. But for these 808s, this soft saturation sounded really nice, the Flathead, Hill, and Classic. So I'm actually gonna leave this on classic for now. And again, you could layer these distortions if you wanted to. Let's just take a listen to what this speaker cabinet will do to this 808. If you're not familiar with what a speaker cabinet is, it's basically an amp simulator, typically used for guitars, but they usually sound pretty good on synths and other sounds as well. But let's test this out on the 808 just for fun. You can see they have a plethora here of different cabinets and different models that you could go into. Let's just start from the top with blues. So definitely pay attention to the stereo separation knob. You could hear that this effect is really spreading out the signal and that's not good for your 808. So let's crank this all the way to mono. And that brings the signal right back. I also turned down this mix knob because it was dramatically affecting the level and the power of this 808. Overall, I'm finding that at least with this first preset, that this is not good for your 808. Because without this, and with it, you're just losing a lot of power there. But let's try these hardcore mono modes. Model A. Now that actually sounds good. It's definitely adding some extra character there. I just noticed these mono cabinets as well. So let's try closest. Yeah, I'm really finding that these mono presets for your 808s work really well when you blend in the mix because it's adding some extra low end into these sounds. So according to YouTube, the next video you should watch is here on your left. And if you like this video, you should definitely check out the video on your right as well. I make new videos every week, so remember to turn on notifications so that you are notified every time I drop a new video. Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.